Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to be showing you a new fortress farm. It's an update, an upgrade to my previous version. This one is faster to build, easier to build, cheaper to build, uh, and actually does have a little bit better rates. Um, so some of the key things here that have changed is we're now able to block magma cubes. And so the design of this farm will do that uh, without really needing to do anything special. Uh, we need a different way of destroying our experience so that that doesn't start building up and adding extra lag to the world. And we are now able to choose whether we want wither skeletons only or blaze only or as shown here still allow both skeleton types and blaze for your uh, most wanted mob drops. And that's all without doing anything more than just one change to this farm to toggle between each of those different things. And then we're also able to properly collect items uh, off of the ice now with hoppers, so our storage and our collection is a lot easier too. So at the end of the video here, I will go through the rates per spawn spot and some of the ratios to so you can better decide on what you need for your storage and your spawn spots. But for now, let's just get into looking at the farm. Okay, so looking at our farm here, you can see it is still very small for a single spawn spot. And here I've got my moss block as the spawn spot. And comparing that to our original farm designs, you see here we have our single spawn spot set up where our minecart would have just sat right there in the powdered snow. But uh, if we wanted to deal with the experience, we had to drop it onto some fires which needed to be separated from the farm all the way down there. Uh, and we needed two hoppers here to catch all the items, uh, kind of a, a big hole to deal with. Um, super simple version here that let the minecart just slide around. The experience would never be killed. Um, so that wasn't ideal, but as a, just a quick and simple, you know, just to start getting some initial drops, that was okay until you could expand on the farm and then with the double version we were actually using the wither skulls to align our minecarts and while i liked that idea uh, it's not the easiest thing to build from scratch and we needed to actually have four um four hoppers uh, if we were cramming these things close together the items would get combined and drop off to the side, or uh, sometimes six hoppers. Just uh, the pickup of items from this was messy, um, and it was quite finicky to to get everything into place. Now those ones down there might not have looked any smaller, but that's because they've added in uh, a control to turn themselves on and off whereas previously we had a centralized uh, switch where the player would flip a switch or stand on a pressure plate to turn them all on. And now they are going to turn themselves on with the strip wire. So this is the comparison. Just these few simple little blocks. And really all you've got is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks, nine blocks if you include the catalyst. And that is your whole, you know, just the, the base build for your Trident Killer without your power system. What is happening here is the mobs will get spawned and it's a too high spot. So even the blaze cannot fly high enough to escape the minecart. They get pulled in the minecart, which is stuck inside that glass pane and against this stair. 
we have our trapdoor trident killer, which you can power this block here to power your trapdoor, or have a block on this backside to power it. And that will kill your mob, and then it'll pick up the next one. If you want wither skeletons only, you would just need to use dirt or soul sand or some other block you can plant flowers on. And you would put your wither rose here, and now you're going to have wither skeletons only. Now, you can't do that with the old designs, because we had glass here. And this white glass is all stuff that needs to be glass, because that's what pushes your mob over here. But the game will see this glass, and then it'll see this flower, and it will keep on checking down, and it's not going to register this as spawnable. So if we use a campfire instead, it will still register this as a spawnable block here on the moss, so that our, we still get our wither skeleton spawns, and they still get instantly pushed over into this space. So that's how we still manage the insta-push and have our weather skeleton spawning. But now that we're using a campfire with the soul campfire and the new light level changes to our skeletons and other mobs, only the blaze are going to spawn at this light level 11. So now we're on a blaze only setup. Just put the campfire out. You're going to get skeletons and wither skeletons and blaze as well. But your magma cubes will not spawn. You see, I'm, I'm in a basalt delta with the particles here. Not getting any magma cube spawning with the structure spawns or the biome because these blocks here are within a two block space of this spawn spot here. Now I made a video on blocking magma cubes and I used that platform up there to, to do the layout so you can see what's required to block magma cubes. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the, the features here of this farm. Now all the items will get picked up by this hopper. They're going to land right in this space here. Um, sometimes they might even end up inside the stairs they get pushed over and they'll still get pulled into this hopper. I have run tests with the hopper here and maybe 5%, less than 5% of the items will get picked up by this hopper. And I'm sure that's only the ones, I'm sure that's only the ones that get picked up before they're pushed out of the stairs in this direction here. If you don't need that hopper, you can add it like that if you want to be just extra certain. And the nice part about it is, even with our two minecarts here offset, you still only need the one hopper. It'll still all get pushed over into this spot here. Uh, so it makes your collection very easy this way. Now, if you want to run your power control all together, like you've got a really, really dense grouping of spawn spots that you're trying to make use of, maybe that's going to be simplest for you. You just have to run your power to this, and you can have a simple comparator clock like this, powering your whole system like I had before. But if we want... We want to have it activate itself, we're going to install a tripwire hook over here.
All right, that's all done. You can cap this off if you want to keep the blaze from seeing you a little bit. But that is, that's all you need. It will turn itself on and it'll shut itself off. So you don't ever have to worry about this thing breaking itself unless you log out while you're standing in the same spot. Uh, but because I have a second trapdoor underneath here, the trident, if it does fall because you've logged out uh, while it's running, it'll stay on this lower trapdoor as long as you're not powering it as well. And so you won't break your minecart, you won't have to rebuild your farm. You could rethrow the trident, or you could just walk far enough away that all of your mobs despawn, and then relog again, and it'll shift your trident back up here at the top. So there are videos that others have done describing that feature more in depth, so I will include a link to that in the description so you can uh, get a better explainer on that if you want to know more. Uh, and I'm using this gate here just to throw the trident against. You don't need it. It's not so picky on the single version anywhere. Generally centralized offset over here will be just fine. Um, but I found it makes this version a lot easier. So if I just throw there and I drop, you'll see it's offset here kind of centralized but still offset on this side. This one here, because these minecarts are fairly close to each other, if one of these tridents is able to hit the other mob, they'll both be hitting at the same time and they'll start, one of them will start getting pushed back until both of them get pushed back and then you might find that you're not actually hitting the blaze anymore. Uh, so that would be if you're doing your, your standard, just manual throwing of the trident kind of close to where the mobs are, right? So this, you throw on the side here at your gates and let it fall. Because I have my hinges flipped up there, they're still going to fall, so they're still going to work. But this prevents the tridents from moving any farther on you. So you don't have to really try all that hard to get it in the right spot on the trapdoor. You just have to throw it at the sides of your gates. And so I've run this for probably 15 hours times 16 spawn spots uh, through my testing. And I've never had to re-throw the tridents when I had it set up like this. That's the best way of throwing those tridents there. And then I do want to show uh, the ice path setup here that is shown in this farm. This is not my design. This is not my in, uh, invention here. This is something that um, some others in the community had come up with here and I'm gonna just double check I've got the name correct and I'll put that up on the screen for who originally came up with this but uh, Gortaframe uh, shared this world with me so he took my fortress farm world and he built this for his own farms and then he sent it back to me so I was able to use this here for my farm and play around with a little bit and he's got a really good video explaining this whole brewing stand, uh, momentum, hitbox collision uh, concept that just keeps items moving along the path. Um, so I highly recommend you go and watch that, even if you don't speak Spanish, like I don't speak Spanish. Um, the subtitles will help, but the video is, is put together well enough that... Uh, even without be understanding what he's saying, you'll be able to, to follow what's happening. I'll show you this real quick here uh, so that you can figure it out a little bit on your own. So what's going to happen is our dropper is going to try and spit out the item and the honey block is just going to help with alignment a little bit so that it ends up right here. Now, without anything 
applied here. And I'm going to get my brewing stand and my slabs ready. Without anything on this, the item's going to have a preference for its direction it comes out. And it's going to stay on the slab with the ice allowing it to slide and move. If I put a full block on this side, that full block is going to force it to come out the other direction. You see it didn't really have much momentum. Now we can help that a little bit by giving it a brewing stand to run into. Now you saw as, as it was coming past here, it suddenly picked up momentum because of the brewing stand. But probably is best if you let it go the direction it wants to go. So simple little test uh, will let you figure out what the preference is going to be. And then you could put a brewing stand right there to make sure that they've got some good momentum. And when you get down to this end over here, uh, we're going to need, you saw that we're, we're stopping right before, so we'll put another brewing stand here, give them some more momentum. Uh, but you'll see that's not going to quite work because it's going to bounce across there. As soon as we put another slab here, they keep going. I don't know why, but it does. So let's just go with it. So now we're going to put a brewing stand here and it's going to direct them that direction. So I'll actually leave this running so we don't have to keep going back and forth. And you'll see it's going over there. Now if I put a slab here, they're going to keep running off on that side. If I put a slab on top, nothing changes. If I do both, they're going to go in that direction. And if I put another slab here, again, we're going here. So, you can play around with this, figure out how you're going to run your items, but running everything in a counterclockwise fashion so everything runs generally the same direction around like I had done over here. Where they're all making corners in the same direction. It's probably going to be the easiest. So now I removed these blocks, but with these blocks in place, they came all the way over here. And I just have the hoppers right underneath the slabs. And all the items got picked up and sent into storage. So it's, it's automatically aligning things for your storage and moving it along. It's, it's just very... Well, it may be hard to take some trial and letter to do some planning on it. It is just a very elegant system that I really like. But let's show one last thing here. So we've already shown you need to have you know, a slab before the brewing stand, so if items are coming down this direction, they would bounce off the brewing stand unless we had a slab. But now let's show actually making the corner. So you saw those made the corner just fine. Let's move this hopper a little bit closer. So now we've only got two blocks between our brewing stands. And it looks like they're just a little bit farther over. So let's see what happens if I put a slab here. It seems to be working. I'm certain I had troubles with it over there. So that might be a little bit of a directional issue. See, that's just barely, that barely reaches over for your speed. This. on you. I should have tested that out before I started recording the video to confirm that it worked. Hmm. It's interesting that I can't replicate it. There we go. Aha. Well, you do have to make sure that you're not moving them too fast. Or they'll maintain some momentum and they'll get caught like this. 
So I didn't. Okay. So maintaining a three block gap in here before your corner will help you ensure that you're not going to uh, miss the corners. You can just throw some dummy items in your droppers once you have them set up and watch them run along. I'm sure you'll have lots of netherrack to waste. Um, all of these other slabs around here, you can ignore those. That's just what I did to spawn proof and make sure I wasn't getting any uh, magma spawning on here so that I didn't have to deal with putting buttons on my ice uh, while I was playing around with it. But anyways, that is just some very, very simple basics for running that, and I will move on back here to our farm. We're gonna actually build these two real quick here. Creative. Let's grab got our gray glass. Grab some white glass. Going to need stair. Going to need glass. I won't need that for a while. And we will need our minecart and our rail. Okay, let's start with this. So our white glass has to stay glass. Our gray glass can be whatever we want. This is your general size for your farm. Don't need these blocks on this side to make it. So if I had two spawn spots right beside each other, I could still build two of these farms right beside each other. But I could not build them if they are this close. Now, in the world I'm pl currently playing on, I do have some spawn spots that are this tight. And so I'm not going to be able to make use of all of them. But any that are this, you know, any two that are one block apart, and then the next closest ones two block gap here, you are able to build them this close to each other. Anyways, let's carry on. If we want to encase the whole thing in blocks to keep the mobs in place, we are dealing with a 3x3 three three spot here. Glass is going to go there. Stairs are going to go there. We don't want it connecting like this while we're still putting the minecart in place. So we'll remove that. And we're gonna get a temporary block there so that we can turn our rails. Let's put a block here to make sure we don't push the minecart too far. And we can put a little bit of walls in. Again, to make sure the minecart stays in place. So let's just push it all the way over. Now it doesn't fall yet we do have to remove that, and now that we're very close, we can just gently tap it, and now it's fallen into place. Let's make sure it's pushed as far in that direction as possible. And because it's only one minecart, we can easily just place our walls back in, and it's going to lock itself in. Now this is only going to move less than a pixel back and forth. So that's as stationary as you're going to get that mine cart uh, with it not being on a rail. Now we can get rid of that. We can put some of our glass in here. We can fill in our solid blocks if we want to fill it all in with solid blocks. Get our trapdoor set up. Now, your Direction decision. Let's uh, grab ourselves a pumpkin for directions. So your directions decisions here. See, I've got a compass. So we've gone to the west of the spawn spot. You can also go to the north of the spawn spot. You can use a pumpkin or a jack-o'-lantern to show you 
which direction is northwest. These stems on bedrock edition will always point to the northwest, so you can tell you've got north and west like that. Or you can use the sunflower as well. Uh, this is just my preferred method because in a mob farm, it points to the corner that the mob spawns on. Um, now I did learn in building this in survival and doing some testing, that you cannot push them diagonally over here if you wanted to move some of your farms together and you know, double up on your minecart usage. Your wither skeletons are just going to end up stuck inside your glass here. They're not going to, to push diagonally over like this. So only go in the cardinal directions, north or west. Because we've gone north or west in that direction, I know that this hinge is always going to be on the south or the east. Now normally I wouldn't want the hinge closest to the mob, uh, but because we're throwing the trident somewhere in the middle, this is going to be fine. So you don't, once you have your farm built, you don't have to worry about your directions again. Just place your trapdoor so that it flips in. Like that. And then you can might have trouble placing your trapdoor because of your minecart, like I'm trying to click right now. If you aim at the bottom side, you can place your trapdoor there. And that's your trapdoor to catch the trident. Again, you can just throw like that, and that's fine. Or you can use the gate trick that I had shown on there. Now all you need is a way to power it. Just need a block next to your upper one here that you can power and do like I had shown over here with with the uh, automatic on and off setup. So now let's do the collection. Done. Collection done. You can decide if you want uh, slime block launchers, the ice path, or just a hopper line, or just to start putting chests there. Okay? End of the video. No, I'm kidding. We'll, we will make a quick little ice path here. Let's get our dropper. I'm going to need you again. Slabs. Aerator. That should be all I need. So we'll get our hopper going into our dropper. Our dropper shooting into a slime block. A little temporary block here. And our ice. Ice is going to be directly underneath. Both directions. And your slabs are going to be underneath slime block and they just run beside your ice and from there you just need a little comparator setup oh what am I doing that's going to read if there's anything in that dropper this is a simple little design that I found just easiest for myself. Oh my goodness, I'm getting it all wrong. Like that. So that will make sure that anything that gets put in here gets fired out. And it will slide underneath this as long as you maintain this half slab gap in here. And then all you would need to do from there is put your brewing stand down with about three blocks between each one and a slab before the next brewing stand. You'll see as they run off the edge of the ice here, they want to kind of hang on the slab. You see them slowing down there. That is the single minecart done. And that's all stuff that uh, you know, you're able to keep in your inventory. You're only using a couple of each block. Um, so it'll be pretty easy to get yourself set up 
and just go nuts building a bunch of these things at once. Now this catalyst here is probably close enough that it would still register the death of your mobs over here. Um, if you've got lots of catalysts, you can just add one for every spawn spot. I can't recall exactly the distance that they reach. But that's something you can keep an eye on, play with. Uh, I'm sure the wiki will, will say. Uh, because the mobs are dying kind of in this glass pane and those stairs, uh, it won't really get skulk spreading, but just in case, um, I've taken to putting this string here. That way, if their death registers in any of these four blocks, there will already be a block in place, and you're not going to get any skulk vein spreading. Okay. So now let's start on the double setup here. With the double setup, again, we're going to have our 3x3 three three space, uh, but we'll need some support blocks underneath. We don't need quite so much, but I will just fill it in anyways. And we'll put our hopper in under, for, under there while we're over here. Again, our glass, we don't want it to connect. So we will put our glass like this. And our stair is going to go down there. Right away. Okay. Oops. And then we're using bells. These bells are going to be what contains our hoppers in this direction. Now let's get our minecart in place. I'm going to make sure our rails are turned. And I'm going to use a gate to get them temporarily aligned, or sorry, not gate, fence posts. Fence posts are the smallest block that will make sure that the minecart still is on the rail. You need it to be on the rail. You need them to be on the rails so that when you break them, they do that. So I have two minecarts in that one small spot because they've snapped the rail. Now we'll drop it down. And just give it a little bit of a nudge. I would remove these in survival and just walk across the moss and give it a little bit of a nudge. Now the minecarts, they stick together and they move together a lot more now. Uh, the last time I made this farm, it was very difficult to keep them from separating. Uh, but now you seem to have to do this dance a whole bunch until you can convince them to separate. Okay, I definitely did not have to summon in two chickens in order to get these two to separate from each other. Nope. Um, I've built these a couple times here in the testing, and that was the most miserable time I've had getting these guys to separate. So on the bright side, it's very easy to get them down into place without them separating too early. Um, but that if somebody has a trick from getting these guys to separate easier, please do let me know in the comments, um, because that's quite frustrating. So anyways, carrying on with the build. I can't place glass here, but I do want the glass to make sure that these minecarts help get locked in with my glass pane here, right? So we're going to need to use a piston to push that glass in. And while we're at it, let's push the next block of glass in. Sorry. These ones can be solid blocks, they don't have to be glass. Again, the minecart collision box is preventing me from placing any blocks right here. We have to come over here. And 
and get some pistons in place so we can push ease. Okay. Now, this does just help ensure that our items will always end up in this one hopper. They won't be offset at all. Don't need that anymore. Now that is the only piston work that you need for this double setup. Uh, the previous design did require a lot more. Okay. Comes up over top of there. Then we need our trap doors. Trap door there. Trap door there. Again, it hinge is facing towards your spawn spot. You're good. You can still place your trap doors on the underside. And you could push a glass block into here. Uh, but that's not necessary. Just doing something like slab. Again, you have to place it on the underside. Just doing something like a slab will work. And now you can have a solid block in here that you would run your power to. Uh, and it would activate both of these trap doors. And you can have your gates go a little bit higher. You want and throw your tridents against these, and then drop them down. And if you want, you can have you could have your tripwire hooks. Now you notice that the tripwire hook is right beside our trap door right here. So that is the, another downside of this double setup, is you need to move your tripwire hooks back a little bit farther. Can you know, that's not not really a big issue, it's just not as clean as that other setup there. there go. Now that will work. Again, this is still, you're only having a few blocks here, one layer of blocks, so if you have a second spawn spot right here, and you're still only two block depth here, so you could have another spawn spot right here, another spawn spot right here, keep building this farm, and the only change you would need to do is you, if they're this close together, you have to alternate your power. So my comparator clock, that's on this side. Round and then up. Solid block to cut that off. Down. That way we're not coming across here. You could also uh, possibly run it up and over some other direction. But you just need to change your redstone up if they're this close to each other. Uh, if you don't have a spawn spots right here, then you just carry it straight across, right? That. And then for these two spawn spots, you put your comparator clock on the other side over here just to make sure your redstone isn't interacting. You had even more of these things next to each other. Maybe you run your tripwire hook even longer so that it's triggering when, you know, on three or four spawn spots instead of just one or two. Anyways, that is how to build both models. I do have a second world set up with the double minecart version. So you'll be able to download that if you want to have a look at that. 
And if you want to run your own tests and play around with this a little bit, um, your storage, you'll just have to replace your ice block and your slabs. If you hit the button on this storage thing here, this is going to clone all of these empty chests here and have them replace these so you can easily reset your tests. Now this test here was the final test I had done which was only eight of these spawn spots. Uh, I had locked off spawning to the other eight of these just so I could test the eight. So this was the rates uh, that I got over the five hour test on the eight spawn spot version. And the five hour test is controlled with these command blocks here. So I've got a button to turn mob spawning on. So we have mob spawning off first. You would come over here, you would push that button to turn mob spawning on. And at the end of five hours, each of these is an hour, you have a command to stop spawning. And then you just got your on. There we go. Uh, your looting sword that you would hold during the test. Okay. Well, now that you've seen kind of how to build it and the world a little bit here, uh, let's talk a bit about the rates. Okay, so I decided to show you guys the farm rates using the spreadsheet here. Now this is so that for those of you who really want to know all the details about the rates and the testing, you can pause the video and have a look at these numbers and use these numbers to help you plan out how many spawn spots you want to plan on making um, and you know, how many hoppers you might need or filters you might need or your storage setup that you're going to need in order to handle the items that are coming through this. Bear in mind that all of these numbers here do not include any of the stackable items. So if, I, if I'm showing numbers here with 16 spawn spots in this test, and we had 100 and, oh sorry, let's go down to the one hour total. We had 20,000 items come through per hour. Um, that does not include your, your swords. So if you're running purely a hopper line, you would need to be dealing with your swords and your bows and your armor, uh, or your hoppers would not be able to keep up. And even then you would need three or four separate hopper lines to keep up with, with this kind of rates. Uh, assuming you've got your, your spawn proofing done appropriately around for where you're AFK. So what we're showing here is for each test, I ran these tests at five hours and I had 16 spawn spots running in most of them, except for this test where I only had eight spawn spots running. And that was just to compare and see uh, if I was running into mob cap issues yet with 16 spawn spots. Now I also did one test that was blaze rods only. So I lit the campfire and I checked to see what my rates were getting blaze rods to see if I was getting faster blaze spawns. You look at the one hour total, or rather let's look at our one hour per one module. So this is averaged back down to the average rate of a single spawn spot. You will see that compared to our eight spawn spot test, we're only nine, nine blaze rods per spawn spot different compared to our 16 spawn spot test. We're a little bit uh, more different than that, but again, very, very similar. So you're not actually farming any particular mob faster if you designate only wither skeletons or only blaze, unless you start going with significantly more spawn spots than 16, because we're not seeing the difference at 16. I don't have a world prepared with many spawn spots. The server I'm playing in, I do have 75 spots that I could use. Um, 
Although I doubt I will do that on that world. But if you do have a lot of spawn spots and you really want to get a lot of blaze rods, you that's when I would recommend you actually run the lit campfires. Otherwise, um, for most people running 16, 20 spawn spots, uh, you could just leave the farm in its base configuration and get all your bones and your coals and your wither skulls without impacting rates really on any of them. Over here, I do have a tab that shows the double minecart version. And you see again, if we're looking at the blaze rods, we're still at three stacks and 29. Uh, so that's just showing that while yes, it does kill twice as fast, uh, we're still, our main limitation is how fast the mobs are spawning. We're still killing them faster uh, in in either version. We're still killing them faster than they're spawning as a whole. As a summary for easier comparison, I'll leave it on this page so you guys can see it. Uh, let's have a look quickly at the, our charts. So our farm comparisons per hour with eight spawn spots. You can see obviously it's less than the rest as you would expect, but let's compare our 16 spawn spots with the single mine cart versus the ones with the double mine cart and very minimal increases in output here with the double mine carts. So that's just showing again that we're not, we're not losing rates going with the single mine cart um, unless you have significantly more spawn spots to deal with. Now, if you run the comparison for just efficiency per spot, you'll get the most product per spawn spot with the fewer spawn spots used with a smaller farm output, even though it's only a single, single minecart in it. So that tells me that there is a little bit of uh, probable mob cap issues where occasionally we might be actually getting up to where some of our mobs can't spawn, but it's not not a significant amount. And these are the, the raw numbers here. So you can see the wither skulls per spawn spot per hour. They're effectively the same for all three tests. And our total output per hour with 16 spawn spots we are looking at 20,000, 21,000 items, stackable items that you're getting. Your bones for 16 spawn spots, you are faster than hopper speed just in bones. Uh, so even in the eight spawn spot test, we're over 6,000. It's not consistent that they come in. You might want to have two sorters for bones even if you only have eight spawn spots. So these numbers here, I'm leaving these up so you can pause them, you can have a look at them, and you can plan out your storage appropriately. Okay, that's, if you haven't paused it by now, you haven't had a look at it, that's your own fault, go back and rewind. Let's wrap up this video. Okay, well I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've got a few other ideas of things that I'm going to show you guys, uh, different farms and showcases that I'll try and find the time to work on here soon. But first, I want to start building this farm in survival. Now, I won't bring you guys along to, to, to show you that, but if you guys have any comments on the farm or any tips with uh, the double minecart version to separate those things, do let me know. And I will post in the description, as always, a world download for this, uh, as well as links to the various videos uh, for some of the guys that that showed different features uh, and techniques that I'm using here in this farm. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time.